Here's the opening to an article from The Guardian on May 26th, 1982. Aston Villa kept the European Cup in England for the sixth consecutive year last night when they defeated Bayern Munich 1-0 in Rotterdam in a final which, while the quality of the football was at times less than distinguished, turned out to be one of the most eventful and exciting matches of its kind in recent seasons. And now, five years later in 1987, here's a quote from then Aston Villa manager Billy McNeil. It was just a matter of getting off the pitch without being thoroughly, totally, and completely embarrassed. Within a few matches, Aston Villa were relegated. Hey there, I'm Adrian and welcome to Rabona TV. Now, with Aston Villa making their way back into the Premier League for the 2019-20 season, I thought it could be fun to look back on their run to becoming champions of Europe and their run towards well, relegation within five years. Just a quick look to give you a general idea, as I'm sure there's more villa-centric blogs and documentaries out there that could give you the more in-depth version. All right, let's get to it. And if you want more in-depth videos, such as on football's hottest rivalries, player bios, and more, then consider subscribing. Aston Villa were flying high in the early 80s, having claimed the English first division title in the 1980-81 season, which was their seventh English top flight title and the last one they've won. Just a side note, they've won two League Cups since then, but that's it as far as domestic top flight silverware. But yeah, back to 1981 as Aston Villa's campaign ensured that Liverpool wouldn't be able to pull off a three-peat of titles, but while Aston Villa managed to stymie them that time, Liverpool wrestled the title back with ease in the 81-82 season, and yes, went on to secure a three-peat over the consecutive seasons. The 80s were Liverpool's. Aston Villa, however, their domestic form following their first division title race really flew in the face of their European achievements. In the 80-81 championship season, Villa manager Ron Saunders only used 14 players on his way to the English title. 14! And in the time leading up to the next season, only one player was brought in, Andy Blair. It's not as though Aston Villa didn't have players available, it was more that Saunders wasn't interested in using those players or just maybe didn't trust them enough. If you look at Villa's form from the beginning of the 81-82 season, they got off to a, a rotten start. Two losses, a win against Spurs, and then six consecutive draws, leading to Villa shifting their focus to their cup competitions, namely the European Cup. In the first round, they were drawn against Valor from Iceland, whom they defeated 7-0 on aggregate. At this point, the league was still a hope, at least finishing in good standing, but by the time October and November came around, bringing with them a fair few losses, then Villa were all in for the European Cup. In the next round, they faced a much sterner task in taking on East German champions Dynamo Berlin. Dynamo Berlin were dominant domestically in the 80s, winning 10 top flight titles in a row in East Germany. In the first leg away in Berlin, Morley scored a brace to give Villa the massive two away goals in a 2-1 win, meaning that despite losing 1-0 to Berlin at Villa Park, they still advanced on away goals. English champions defeating the East German champions. Next, they would take on Dynamo Kiev, the champions of the Soviet top league for the last two seasons consecutively, and as if their season couldn't get any crazier, Villa were eliminated from the League Cup and longtime manager Ron Saunders resigned from the club following a disagreement with board member Ron Bendall, apparently something to do with his contract, so his assistant Tony Barton took over. Funnily enough, Saunders went to crosstown rivals Birmingham City and in his first match faced his former club. Villa defeated Birmingham and their former manager Saunders 1-0. That had to feel good. So, with Barton, a relatively unknown as their new head coach, Villa continued to get the results they needed in Europe. They held Kiev to a 0-0 draw away, and in the return leg at Villa Park, two first-half goals from Gary Shaw and Kem McNaught pushed Villa into the semis, and with defending champions Liverpool eliminated now, suddenly the belief was there that they genuinely had a shot at the European title. Because remember, Liverpool was doing way better than them domestically. Next, of course, was Belgian champions Anderlecht, and the Belgian champs boasted an extremely dangerous counter-attack that the villains needed to be aware of. But in the first match at Villa Park, Villa controlled the match well, and the first half goal from, yes, Tony Morley, once again, was enough to get them the 1-0 win at home, despite Anderlecht pushing hard in the second half. Then in the return leg, Barton had some injuries to consider, with his team looking like the walking wounded with a place in the finals on the line. But despite that, Barton fielded the same 11 in Belgium with many carrying knocks and the defense still stood strong, getting a 0-0 draw and progressing 1-0 on aggregate to the finals. This Villa team really had a great defense. That match was notable not only for Villa making the finals, but for the absolute chaos that occurred before the match on the streets, during the match in the stands, and after the match, everywhere. 
27 fans were arrested, and during the match, a Villa supporter ran onto the pitch during an Anderlecht attack, which led to the match being suspended for a few moments, while the police at least tried to calm the crowd down, to try and get a hold of things. So it was a date in the European Cup final for the team from England's second city, as they were to face the legendary Bayern Munich. Now, Bayern hadn't won the European Cup for a good six years at this point, and this felt like an incredible chance to reclaim the crown against what was, at the time, a mid-table villa side. Bayern were the massive favourites for this one, with most media personalities and outlets writing off the English side. Bayern would have had even more confidence when Villa's preferred keeper, Jimmy Rimmer, would be subbed out in just the ninth minute due to a neck injury, meaning Nigel Spink, at 23 years old and having had just one other appearance for Villa, entered the fray. What a second appearance that is for your Villa career. Coming on in the European Cup final where your team was the heavy underdog, and he'd be made to work in order to keep his team in the match, making plenty of saves against the German giants. In the second half, the pressure was still on Villa for much of it, but in the 67th minute, commentator Brian Moore said these haloed words. Mortimer, Shaw, Williams prepared to adventure down the left. There's a good ball played in for Tony Morley. That goal sealed the title for Villa, and that line of commentary from Brian Moore would be immortalized with a permanent banner on Villa Park's North Stand to this day. So now if you see those words on the stand while you're watching a Villa match this next season, well, you'll know exactly where they came from. So they returned to the Midlands as heroes and went on to defeat Barcelona 3-1 in the European Super Cup. A second European trophy for Tony Barton, but it was only down from there. Pun intended, in this case. It started with former chairman Doug Ellis returning to the club after being given his marching orders back in 1979. Following his return, the aging core of the squad that won the European Cup was slowly dismantled, and within three years, they were almost completely unrecognizable from the side that conquered Europe. Many Villa fans were against Ellis' return to power at Villa and attribute their downfall to him after he broke up their core from the 1982 team. Though to be fair to him, to some degree, the team was aging and in need of some younger blood, but it seemed to be too much change too soon. Instead of a responsible blooding in of players, it was almost like a revolutionizing of the squad. There's also an aspect of just catching lightning in a bottle for that Villa team. In the 1982-83 season, their first full season under Barton, he managed to lead them to 6th place in the English 1st Division and made it as far as the quarterfinals of the European Cup, getting smashed 5-2 on aggregate by Juventus. Following this season, Villa lost some more of their stars from their cup triumph, such as Morley, Swain, and McNaught, and in the 1983-84 season, they only managed to finish in 11th place, thus costing Barton his job. That was his last notable foray into coaching as Barton had to resign from his post as Northampton's manager due to health problems. Ellis then chose Barton's replacement as 36-year-old player manager from Shrewsbury named Graham Turner, a guy who had never played in the first division, with his only achievement being securing promotion for Shrewsbury from Div 3 to Div 2. A bit of a gamble of an appointment from Ellis. They started terribly in the 1984-85 season, even flirting with the relegation places at one point, but climbed their way back to mid-table by the time the season was through. In the 85-86 season, which followed, things were even harder for Graham Turner and his side, as they had lost Mortimer, Cowens, and European hero Peter Wythe prior to the season and failed to bring in worthy replacements, and this truly felt like the beginning of the end for them. Villa kicked off the 85-86 season winless in their first four matches, but it was their form during the winter which was worrying. From December through March, Villa won three matches of a possible 16 and were there or thereabouts in regards to relegation to the second division with a few matches to go. Thankfully for them, they managed to get the important victories they needed over Watford, Ipswich and Chelsea down the final stretch, which is enough for them to finish three points above the drop. Villa lived to fight another season in the top flight, but it wouldn't be an enjoyable ride for anyone. With a squad that was extremely young and inexperienced at the back and was rocked with injuries all over the park, Villa's 1986-87 season was a tough one with injuries, as mentioned, but also poor performances out of the team in general. They kicked off the season on the 23rd of August, 1986, at home to Tottenham and were the victims of a Clive Allen hat trick. Another loss followed, and one after that, with a break in the clouds coming courtesy of a victory over Luton Town, but three more losses on the trot bookended that victory. 
That victory over Luton came in part thanks to Luton playing with 10 men for much of the second half as they had a guy go off injured and they were out of subs. To make matters worse, as time went on in the season and as more losses rolled in, Villa lost one of their main midfielders in Steve Hodge to Tottenham, an England international. But before they lost Steve Hodge, much, much before that, on the 13th of September, Villa were stomped 6-0 by Nottingham Forest, which led to the termination of Graham Turner's contract and the appointment of Billy McNeil. Yet another manager for Villa in such a short time frame. Things turned around under McNeil as he managed to get four wins from his first six matches in control, but Villa's fate was seemingly sealed come November, and nobody could stop it. From November 15th to the final day of the season, May 9th, 1987, Villa played in 28 league matches, meaning there was a possible 84 points up for grabs in that stretch. How many did Villa manage to secure? 20. Villa had been condemned to the second division football, officially at least, with their 2-1 loss at Villa Park against Sheffield Wednesday in the second to last match of the season. McNeil was released by Villa following their relegation season, unsurprisingly so, but you can't really blame him. Villa's relegation felt like it was due and could be seen for a couple of seasons prior, with the breakup of the cup winning squad, the massive gambles that Chairman Ellis took not only on an inexperienced manager and Turner, but inexperienced players who no longer had many of the original experienced veterans to look to for guidance. While these young talents such as Aspinall and Keown would go on to play a big role in re-establishing Villa in the first division later on, their integration and the ousting of the players with the European Cup medals around their necks was all done a little too hastily, as Villa went from champions to relegation in five fast years. And there you have it, a quick little story about Villa's dizzying heights and the lowest of the lows for them. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit like to let me know, subscribe if you're new around here, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.